Now that we've seen some of the problems that can come up with this, and we've seen that this binding depends on how a function's called and not how a function's defined, let's dive into how the JavaScript runtime, or the browser, decides what that this binding should be. So if we're calling a function with a dot, then this is going to be bound to the thing before the dot. So let's take a look at that part. Is function being invoked with a dot? If the answer to this question is yes, then this inside of that function will evaluate to whatever is before the dot. So if the call was x dot f, this would evaluate to x. If the answer to this question is no, so the very same function object being invoked without a dot, in that case, this will evaluate to the global object. And in the browser, the global object is called window. So that would be something like saying f2 equals x dot f, and then invoking f2 without a dot. Same function object as we had over here. But in this case, there's no dot, and so this will be the global. And it turns out that there are a couple of other edge cases. We won't talk about all of those here. They're in the spec. But one other one to be aware of actually happens above this decision point in the tree. And that's, is the function being invoked with the new operator? So the new operator is involved in the original syntax for inheritance. And it has a number of effects on the function that we're running. For our purposes here today, we're going to be interested in one particular effect. If the answer to this question is no, then we proceed to the decision we already looked at. But if the answer is yes, in that case, regardless of how the function is being invoked, this will be bound to a new empty object. So these three cases, is the function being invoked invo with new, yes or no? And if not, is the function being invoked with a dot, yes or no? Covers the three main cases for how the JavaScript runtime will decide by itself what this should be bound to. In subsequent sections, we'll look at how to work around some of these issues and how to tell the browser exactly what we'd like this to be. In the next section, we'll look at a common workaround that solves the problem we saw, and we'll discuss the pros and cons.